All right, ladies and gentlemen, I hope you had a wonderful day. I got another watch list for you, and everybody is shorting the market. I need these for the thumbnails. This is like my OMG face, but there was a report today that hedge funds are now the most net short that they have been since 2009, and we have to talk about this, and this is such a big deal because tomorrow is the big event with cpi so i have a breakdown for you i'm going to simplify what to expect tomorrow hopefully you can go and look up the numbers if not here is what is expected 5.1 on the headline and 5.6 on the core but i say this every single time if you are not aware youtube.com slash the stock market we will be live an hour before the bell and we're going to be interpreting all of this live but now whatever happens tomorrow and and based on how the market's positioned, it is about to get crazy. So, Chad, we got a lot. I got the breakdown. I got everything. I do got a couple of plays, but let's just start off with the CPI and what to expect. So I already gave you the simple breakdown, but now here is the bottom line. The bottom line for tomorrow is that the March CPI is going to fuel bets for an imminent rate pause, or it is going to support one more rate hike. We brought this up yesterday. The market has been reacting with Fed futures pricing in one more rate hike. Why it's so important? Because if you look at the dot plot, this is where the market thinks everything is going to happen. The market's saying one more rate hike and and then that's it. That is the max. But depending on tomorrow's data, that's either going to speed up the rate pausing cycle or it is going to make the, the puck get moved a little bit. Then everyone's going to say, OK, may, maybe one more. But that's all it boils down to as far as how the numbers come in. If it goes in higher and lower, I got a little bit of analysis for you on that. But quite simply, does this data support a pause or does it support one more rate hike? That will be the main focus tomorrow. So that's the first thing. But the second thing, we brought this up earlier today, the other big factor about the CPI tomorrow is that the core is expected to come in higher than the headline. This has not happened since January 2021. The headline number is expected to go in at 5.1. That is including food and energy. But core, which is excluding food and energy, is expected to be higher. Now, this is where things get very, very big here because the bigger the gap between between the two, that's pretty much going to let you know whether or not the good news is actually going to stay or not, or if it'll be short lived. Essentially, if headline core comes down a lot tomorrow, people are going to love that. But if the core stays high or goes even higher, that's pretty much letting people know, yeah, inflation's coming down because gas prices came down. However, if core is up, that means the real disinflation has not occurred and that chances are the market is going to be extremely sensitive to energy and gas prices. So that's not good. But here's the best part. We brought this one up today. The thing about the CPI tomorrow, depending on where core comes in, if if core comes in slower, the market is going to love it because now if you take a look at headline, if headline just comes in in line at 5.1, the Fed futures right now are at 4.75 to 5. So after this, whatever happens, if CPI comes lower and then after this next Fed meeting, the fact of the matter is now interest rates will be as high as headline CPI. So that's why if core comes lower and now the Fed funds rate is pretty much at the same price as core and headline then the Fed can start talking about pausing and where they go from here. So that's why tomorrow's all going to be important. I mean, it's very simple as far as what do I expect? I think good will be good. Bad will be bad. If inflation drops, I think the bonds are going to rally. If inflation comes lower and then that supports the bond market saying, you know, one, one more and done. If rates come in lower or CPI comes in lower, the rates are going to love it. And I think bond yields are going to go down and they are going to rally. Otherwise, if inflation comes up higher, I I do think bond yields are going to sell off as maybe the bond market may have to prepare for the possibility of not only another hike, but maybe an additional one if inflation proves to be as stubborn as it was last year. So I'm talking about bonds, but if you haven't realized at this point, 
I think it's the same thing for stocks. Again, if inflation comes down, I think stocks are going to like it. If inflation goes up, they are not going to like it. But now what you need to keep an eye out for is this gap between headline and core like we talked about, because depending on how that plays out, I wouldn't be surprised if a headline beat causes the market to go up. But then if people kind of focus on core, that may lead to fade the move down the line. So we're really going to see what happens. And like I'm saying, all in all, I'm very agnostic about this move. It is going to be very big data, but the fact of the matter is you have CPI and earnings right around the corner, and that could probably move the market a little bit more. However, whatever data we get tomorrow, that's going to feed into every narrative or it might destroy some narratives. And that's why I'm saying bonds will be very, very key to watch. But now the next big thing we got to talk about is what I titled this video, the hedge fund short, as well as the pre earnings run up. And these are now the events. Another thing is we have the Fed minutes tomorrow at 2 p.m., but that's from a month ago. You see where the market's at. CPI is even though CPI is a month ago, too, that's going to be more recent. So I'm expecting bigger moves there, but we'll see what happens with the CPI. But now now we need to focus on how the market's positioned and now what happens leading into earnings and afterwards. So we started with the headline hedge funds are the most net short since like 2011 or something like that. But why this is key, because anytime you've seen big short positions like this, I mean, the market has moved down very big, but then it's also had some pretty epic rallies. Even if you notice most of 2022, most futures were net short to begin with. So that's something to keep in mind. But now the real story moving forward is tomorrow going to be key. Yes, it is. Please don't get lost in the sauce. And we are going to have to string events. I know you're going to hear it. We're going to get the data. Then I'm going to tell you to look at the next data set. And you'll be like, Josh, you always tell me to look at the next data set. Well, welcome to 2022 and 2023. OK, but that's how we have to play tomorrow. But now earnings. So bank earnings are on Friday. And why I'm bringing this up is because now this pre earnings run up what we're going through now. This is actually the largest pre earnings run up since 2009. And what that's referring to is the month before earnings start. That's considered the pre earnings. This month we are up six percent. Last time that happened or last time it was this big, it was 2009. So why am I bringing this up? Because the last Last four earnings over the last year of earnings, we have done the opposite of the pre one month move. So essentially one month before earnings, if we have rocketed up, we have sold off. What we've seen more notice notably is that we have sold off the month ahead of earnings and then earnings comes out and we end up going good. Why? Because ahead of earnings, everybody starts marking down and guiding down lower and lower. We start dropping. Then by the time earnings comes in, everyone says it could have been worse. This time around, we are actually up. So this is going to be key because if if things hold up, especially after the CPI, it's looking like we are going to have one of the biggest pre earnings run ups. And now what happens on Friday is what I told you on the video yesterday. You are going to be getting the bank earnings on Friday. Why is this so key? Because that's literally the, the starting the starting line of everything. Pretty much all of these trends, the one month before and then doing the opposite hate to break it to you, it all starts after the bank earnings. So pretty much once the bank earnings are done, the last four earnings, we have done the opposite. Am I saying that's gonna happen here? I don't know, but the point is, right after bank earnings, now we get the minutes, now we're gonna get CPI, you're gonna get all of this good stuff, but what happens, banks are gonna report, we're gonna see the attitude, and then it's all the other big earnings, you get like one or two weeks, and then before you know it, it's pow, ladies and gentlemen. So that's the breakdown of all of it. I hope you guys are ready. I hope you know what I'm saying. Tomorrow, we got to read between the lines, see what it means for the future. And there's a lot of implications about the future tomorrow. But mainly, we got to see what it does to the Fed and Fed policy. How does it destroy or build any narratives in the market? But then quickly, our focus is going to go right to the bank earnings because depending on how things are at, that will probably set our trend for the rest of the month until we hear from pal. So I hope you're ready. But Chad, that is pretty much everything as far as the plays. I think I cut out a 3M today. I added Baidu again at the lows. Again, a lot of tra drama with the China names and the AI. Thought I'd go for a flip. Again, I, I keep adding on there. But the thing I talked about today, I'm still holding like the NQ and a lot of different plays. We have been winding down. I freed up a ton of capital again. I even closed out some of the bonds the way I'm even looking at 
slash CPI. Do I think this will be a big event? Yes. Do I think we have an opportunity to make some plays? If it's an easy read tomorrow, hell yeah, we're going to go for it. I, I'm really excited for it. But the way I'm looking at it is that I think this is all the pregame. And I think the real setup for bonds, stocks and everything, it'll be a mix of responding to earnings, but now getting ready for Powell. But besides that, going to be watching the bank stocks. I'm definitely going to be taking those gambles. I like FRC a lot. I close out my McDonald's short, but depending on the attitude we get after CPI, if people don't want the defensives, I will be eyeing that one to the down. Side. And then the final play I want to bring up to keep your eyes out for, it's going to be oil. I still have my oxy play. They're right at break even. But like I'm telling you, in line with this CPI and what it could be signaling, how oil moves and what it does in the future. I mean, maybe once we get confirmation or even after pow, the season of oil and energy may return. So we'll see what happens. But Chad... That is your watch list, ladies and gentlemen. Make sure Hydra Healthy ready to go. Make sure you post your watch list. Make sure we see you there in the morning. I need the armor on. I need the helmet shining. I need you to remember, baby, it is game time. You got to think outside of the box. It's all about surviving. But, Chad, you will reap what you sow. Put in the work. You have made it this far. What's the point of going this far? No one wants you to turn back. Don't let the YOLO demon get the best of you. Don't let the too fast demon get the best of you. Go at your own pace. Take it little by little. And if you got cash, that is oxygen. The longer you got oxygen, the longer you're in the game. Again, you don't even got to be mature about it. You just got to be there at the right moment and have the right resources. So let opportunity run into you a little bit, baby. But we got a lot to go forward with. And like I'm saying, man, before you know it, it's about to be summer. So I hope you're locked and loaded. But Chad, that's it. I'm not going to be awkward. I'm just going to say goodbye. I'll see you in the morning. Get some good rest. Am I getting? Okay, I did. Okay, I love you. Horn. Mm -hmm.